Hi, this is Ibrahim Subhi from TP-Link. This video we are covering XDSL introduction. So in this video, you're going to learn about involved technology of XDSL, XDSL product introduction, configuration of TP-Link XDSL products, highlight functions of TP-Link XDSL products, and question and answer of deep link products. First, involved technology of XDSL. Data transfer technology has gone through four stages so far. So first, POTS, then narrowband modem, then ISDN, and XDSL. So what does it mean? POTS, this is mean plain old telephone service and this is only offer voice signal transfer services. Then narrowband modem and this is modulate the data to the analytic signal. Then we go to ISDN, we achieve the full, full digital, full digital, uh, uh, full digital network and simultaneous data and audio transfer. Then we go to last to XDSL, which adopted the FDM frequency division multiple multiplex, and this technology divides voice signal and upstream signal and downstream signal in three independent channel, and there is no interaction between the voice and data signal in the data transfer process. So the relation among these technologies can be demonstrated in the blue diagram. ADSL technology is by using the existing telephone network. Asymmetric digital subscriber line mean that asymmetry means that there is a great difference between the upstream bandwidth and downstream bandwidth. So as we see here, the downstream bandwidth is much higher than the upstream bandwidth. So 1.1 mega Hertz bandwidth is used by ADSL and maximum downstream rate is 8 mega bit per second. Then G992.2 was introduced after ADSL and it come with higher data rate and better stability than ADSL2 come and ADSL2 is able to achieve up to 12 megabit per second for downstream rate and 1 megabit per second for upstream and this is improve also improve the transmission distance uh, which mean ADSL2 without any splitter then we go to ADSL2 plus which an advanced version of ADSL2 and this is expand the spectrum from 1.1 megahertz to 2.2 megahertz. And ADSL2 plus was now become widely used. Then we go to, to VDSL, which means very high bit rate digital subscriber loop. And the downstream rate in short distance can reach up to 55 megabit per second and upstream up to 19.2 megabit per second due to high frequency of vdsl attenuation of, of the line is quite serious and the line is easy to be disturbed so that's lead to situation and more these lamps are needed in order to provide user with VDSL services and this is large cost and the modulation time varies among the service provider and that leads to a lot of issues of VDSL so VDSL can't be widely used now and uh, it is replaced by VDSL2 VDSL2 is quite similar to ADSL and the ADSL2 plus because its modulation use the uh, DMT uh, but the frequency range is extended to 30 MHz 
and VDSL2 can provide up to 100 megahertz rate for both upstream and downstream. The main feature of VDSL2 that it's provide up to 100 megabit per second rate for both upstream and downstream within 300 meter and VDSL2 is backward compatible with ADSL, DSL2 and 2 plus and the VDSL2 modem can also work on ADSL2 and 2 plus line. VDSL2 can provide the speed of 1 to 4 megabit per second at 4 to 6 km, km distance and the speed increase when the distance is shorter and the maximum speed can reach is 100 megabit per second. Here is the main development history from ADSL until we reach VDSL2 in 2015. So maximum download stream we got in VDSL2 is 300 megabit per second and upload up to 100 megabit per second.